Hi everyone, good morning, this is Dan. Welcome to Anglogeist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate them. Now, this is the daily forecast for all signs that it's a collective reading. Um, so I speak in broad terms. You have to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. If it doesn't fit, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything's wrong or broken. You just might be working on something different at this time. Um, uh, for those of you that are new, please check out the drop down menu underneath any of my daily videos. In there is just some things that I want you to think about when utilizing my channel, what decks I'm using, how to contact me for a private reading, um, where to follow me on social media, and easy ways to support the channel. Great ways to support the channel. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, share the video out, leave me a question or comment. All of that is greatly appreciated. Now, this video. I will refer back to the Sunday underpinning video, which um, is the underpinning energy of these cards. So if you're be talking about cards that you don't see in this reading, I'm referring to that reading. That is in the lower left-hand corner at the end of this video, if you want to check that out. This video is originally created for the 12th of Saturday, uh, Saturday the 12th of November, the 12th of Saturday, the 12th of November. It's not solely set for that date. It can be used whenever you see it, if it applies to your situation by all means, utilize it. I believe readings find us when they're meant to, not oftentimes when they're created for. So there is a, um, a, you know, an energetic aspect to this that you can use the reading. Um, what else do I need to say? I feel a little bit off today. I want to apologize for skipping a day. Um, the tower that we saw in uh, the Sunday underpinning has been affecting me. The... Uh, I mean, I hate to be the guy that blames stuff on the planets, but the lunar eclipse and this 1111 portal have got me all uh, let's just say, vibrational. All right, so let's get into these cards and see what's going on. <clears throat> you know, I say vibrational because we speak, I think that we forget as human beings that when we speak our words, our thoughts, we speak them into power. So I think vibrational is a good idea because if I give it a negative or a positive connotation, you know, I speak that into power and I I, I can build that within me. I so I definitely feel um, shifty, let's just say. Uh, vibrational, like shaky. I've been waking up at all hours this morning, actually. I will. And I looked at my phone not knowing what time it was. It was 4.44 in the morning. So I got up and I filmed the 11.11 reading. It is 11.11 right now. So we are in that portal. And that portal will affect us for the next couple of days. Fading off into the sunset, right? And we're still feeling the feel, uh, sort of some of the vibrations from the eclipse, right? That is still also at play as that sort of dulls down and we adjust into the new changes that have taken place because of that, right? So let's look at our card really quick. And our card for the, wow. High Priestess, okay. Not wasted on me that, you know, I'm doing these readings together. The morning of the 11th, I'm normally shooting a day ahead of time, guys, for my Patreon subscribers, right? So that they can see the daily reading ahead of time to prepare and, and make the most of the energy. And this morning's reading previously was the Hanged Man, which is Piscean energy. High Priestess, she's also Piscean energy. This is about deeper spiritual truth, right? So is the Hanged Man, really, when you think about it. Um, it's about finding that enlightenment question, even in a situation that may be adverse or challenging. The High Priestess, though, she is like that bitch, right? I mean, she is... I've heard me and a friend of mine who watches this reading who will understand who I'm referencing. There's somebody who says the high priestess uh, thrown up in the corner. And it, to me, it's it's funny, but it's such a disrespect to what the high priestess represents. She is about spiritual knowledge. She is about wisdom. She is about being connected internally. We see this door opening with this little like soul in her in her solar plexus, but also kind of reaching up to her heart, the wisdom that is within her, right? She is, she looks like she's carrying a box of tissues. That just might, might, might be my, see, see, I'm like shaking. Like literally when I say I'm vibrational, it's like wild to me um, how my energy feels right now. Um, but she has that wisdom within. And here's the thing with the high priestess. And I think sometimes why she gets a bad rap. <clears throat> she's not always one 
to share that wisdom freely with anyone. She doesn't waste that wisdom. Nothing is ever wasted with her. She trusts her, her, her intuition and her gu inner guidance, her inner GPS, more so than anything else, right? And she doesn't necessarily have to give that away or, or force that upon people or convince people of it. She just knows, right? That's this, this sort of... Um, moon above her head. We also see the moon down here at her feet. She's allowing that internal, emotional, intuitional guidance to be her wisdom. What this says to me, doing these readings so closely together, right, is that the hanged man that we see from saw from yesterday and the tower that's shifting underneath all of this, right, and all of this is major arcana energy during this transit through the 1111 portal. What this says to me is that the answer that we may be seeking from yesterday's hanged man is within us and we have it and and it bears fruit like look at all the beautiful pomegranates hanging um seeds uh fruit for new awarenesses new paths new opportunities but we have to trust that that internal voice within right we have to understand the power that it brings with it yesterday in the clarifiers we also saw the hierophant which was to me kind of signifying you know, that sort of foundational pillar strength. The High Priestess is also considered a pillar card. That's why we have the two curtains here, both light and dark. She accepts both aspects of her self, the light and the shadow. She understands and has wisdom and knowledge about them and knows how to utilize them in ways that serve her, not necessarily in any um, negative way, just in ways that serve her. And she doesn't have to explain it. Right. She this could also still I will say this with the hangman from yesterday, we still could be holding our cards close to the vest, you know, like not necessarily revealing our secrets just yet. And that's OK. Yeah, she is about trusting our own answers over the answers of others. And and if we even if we keep them from within or keep them within to serve only us, we're allowed to do that. We have every right to do that, if that makes sense. And allow those answers to be strong, powerful, and connected to you within, and to bear that fruit, to bring you to that realization that maybe the hanged man was seeking yesterday, or the realization of which way you need to move amidst this um, shift, this tower that could be changing for us in the midst of all of this. Now, let's look at the Hip Hop Queen's Oracle. We have Angie Martinez, Voice. Interesting that it's voice, but yet we have the high priestess who is oftentimes a signature of silence or keeping that within. What I think about this, and she's also decked out in New York, and I think about New York as being like, you know, kind of don't, if, I, if there's any New Yorkers, don't take me wrong, but East Coasters in general, I won't just um, mark New York as its own thing, but East Coasters, because a lot of my family's from Massachusetts and the East Coast, they're very opinionated. They have no problem speaking their voice, right? And so it looks to me here like Nancy Martinez, I don't necessarily know her music, but she has a voice, right? And I love that she has this harp here, right? She's listening to the voice of her heart. The high priestess is listening to like sort of her gut that is also connected to her heart and her knowledge or her um, seventh chakra inner wisdom and intuition. I feel like the voice here is to listen to the voice within, whether we voice that to another person or try and convince them, that's not the point here today. The point here is to get real clear and stand real strong in who we are, what we stand for. I mean, with all of this New York memorabilia, she's obviously a champion of New York. She understands who she is, where she's from, what she has to offer. So does the High Priestess. But I think that this is more about, we'll read her Angie's card, but I think that this is more about hearing that voice within and then trusting that. If we choose to share it, we certainly can, but we don't have to with the high priestess being present is my feeling. Let me read you Angie Martinez really quick. <clears throat> voice, vocalization, silence, feeling muted. For decades, Andy, Angie Martinez has been re regarded as the voice of New York. The legendary ra radio personality started in New York City's hot at New York City's Hot 97 before switching over to Power 105. In the meantime and in between time, Angie started a brief, brief rap career and released a memoir aptly titled My Voice. And what a voice it is, one of the most recognizable in all of hip hop. You don't need to see Angie's face to know it's her, especially when so much of her career has been behind a microphone and not a camera. To be recognized simply by your tone, your cadence, and your subject matter is a triple threat most MCs wish they could possess, and Angie has it across all frequencies. 
that's interesting to me too, because the high priestess would have it across all frequencies too, in a very quiet, powerful manner. No, Angie, Mar the, Angie Martini's card is not an immediate suggestion to start the rapping or singing career, though it can be if that's your hidden goal. Really, pulling Angie's card suggests you're in a predicament involving your voice. Is the little voice inside your head telling you to go in one direction and you're scared? Do you feel like you have something to say to someone, yet you're not being heard? You must break through your own sound barrier here. The only one stopping you from speaking up is you. And if you're not reaching your desired result, then switch it up. Like Angie's detour to rapping, your opportunities are endless. When you find the power in your voice, your words will always be hot. So I do think this is about finding that voice within, and that voice is powerful, strong, and coming from a very spiritual place with the high priestess being present. I'm just going to say that. Um, and it's also heartfelt with this heart here. It's championing ourselves above all else is my feeling here. There's a ballsiness to Angie that I really, really like. <clears throat> she ain't taken no, no stuff from no one, and neither is the high priestess, right? Even if the, the no ones don't under, don't know that and they still try and give us their stuff, we ain't taking it is the feeling I'm getting with these cards. Let's go to the clarifiers. So, ah, we have the hanged man. <laughs> More Piscean energy. there. And again, I just described all of this in the previous reading that I just did. The hanged man is about awaiting in the moment and being in the enlightenment. The high priestess is the enlightenment. It is our truth, our spiritual truth and trusting that truth right? Be present in the present moment, even if it feels uncomfortable, stuck, or not moving forward. And and try and find a way to uh, have gratitude for that. This is about listening for the voice, listening for the enlightenment. This is about acting or not even acting, but owning the voice, right, is the high priestess. This double Piscean energy, to me, wouldn't surprise me if y'all are a little emotional, a little bit psychic, having some intuitional pulls and feels around a situation or, you know, are they up to this? Are they doing that? Those Listen to those voices, but don't necessarily, these two would indicate, don't necessarily be careful of making assumptions and be careful of taking action or voicing anything too quickly. Uh, to make maybe say the tower situation any worse than it needs to be kind of thing, right? This is about uh, finding our own inner wisdom moving through this day and using that wisdom to further ourselves. We have the Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles is about uh, craftsmanship, artisan, doing the work in front of us. Again, we see another earth-based um, card here. Yesterday's reading we had in this position, the Hierophant, right? Um this is about grounding ourselves during this time while we gain this wisdom, while we gain this voice, you know, focusing on the things right in front of us that we know how to do perfectly and in balance, right? We, uh, not necessarily, I don't want to say don't look at the bigger picture, but don't get overwhelmed is kind of the feeling that I get with this Eight of Pentacles. This Eight of Pentacles says, do what's right in front of you. Trust what's being told within you. Trust the wisdom that it comes from within. It is coming from maybe a harder, higher, definitely a higher place or plane, an awareness that we didn't maybe otherwise have access to. And so now we need to put that voice or that wisdom to work in, in, in a very productive, methodical way with this Eight of Pentacles here. And it's in a way that only we know how to do, right? Because that's the sort of craftsmanship aspect to this. That's sort of the, the, skill, uh, the skills set that this card has. And then the last card is the Six of Pentacles. Notice he's holding the scales. To me, this is like the Justice's little sister card, right? In a way. She's a little bit more blunt because she's Pentacles, right? But it's about stability being restored, especially with the Eight of Pentacles there. But we're the ones just uh, like restoring that stability, right? We're the one doing the work, finding the answers and responding or answering, owning those answers and utilizing them, putting them to work through the Eight of Cups to restore the balance, um, the equanimity, the equality in a situation between maybe two parties or with, at work or within a relationship. But we're not doing it from a place of like, oh, I've got to save this relationship. It's a, from a place of like, no, this is my truth. This is what I need. This is who I am. This is this is my truth, right? And so putting that to work, even taking small steps, but staying grounded while we're doing it today, even as we're learning the information or while we may be feeling emotional, is going to be key. Let's go to the grounding stone. And remember, like I say, this 
the grounding stone for the week this week is success, right? So whatever we're doing, we should be successful as we're doing it, right? And be focused on that grounding and that whatever our voice is telling us and whatever we're putting to use, we are gaining, going to be successful in how we productively move forward, especially seeing this eight of pentacles and the six of pentacles would be about restoration of balance. And this is also about balance, but also about doing the work, knowing the steps and knowing how to put it into productive use that serves us, right? That's that success. Now this grounding stone never stands up correctly. So, and my hands are like literally shaking. Um, this is wisdom. Ground in our own wisdom. This is the wisdom of the high priestess. This is the wisdom of, you know, Angie and her voice. This is the wisdom that comes from the weight that the hanged man presents itself with. Um, this is also the wisdom in, in the work and the stability that the eight and the six of pentacles provides. Um, we are like, what's the word I want to say? Like we have the intelligence, the wisdom, the knowledge, the know-how, the um, ability to move our way through this in a way that will educate us, evolve us, grow us profoundly is my feeling with the high priestess and the hanged man here and just the, the, um, the, the major arcana cards that we've seen in the last few readings, even in the midst of the tower. I think that we grow profoundly and we learn a new level of trust, uh, self-awareness and um, belief in oneself and wisdom about that that is, is unmatched or, or new to us and, and, and well-deserved, let's say that, okay? And it will lead us to the success that we seek wherever that may be. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. That is your reading for the day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please, by all means, if you enjoy my content, hit that thumbs up button. It greatly helps me. Leave me a question or comment. Um, subscribe to the channel and share the video out wherever it would be um, appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for a new weekly. Have a wonderful day and take care. Bye-bye.